Kia ora e te whanau. Ngā mihi nui ki a koutou, ti ati awa taranaki whanui. Ngā mihi nui ki te whanau o te EHF. Ki te whanau o Kopakopa. Te rongoa ki te au. Nō reira, he mihi mahana ki a koutou katoa. Huri noa, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Kia ora. My name is Graydon Parker. I'm an artist, activist and social entrepreneur. And my journey began on a, f- with a scholarship down to Massey University in Wellington, where I studied graphic design. And here I was inducted into the, the lifestyle of a student where I realized I had no idea how to look after myself. I was away from my mum's cooking. I started eating raw broccoli, and that was my vegetables. I started eating two-minute noodles and white bread and double brown beer. (laughs) Um, And on that highly um, nutritious diet, I was also very stressed out with the amount of design assignments that we had due, and there was a culture that developed of staying up all night and handing it in the next day. And with that kind of behavior, myself and a few fellow students here in the room, we were on the road to just destroying our immune systems. And I I quickly learned that if I was going to continue that behavior, I was going to wind up really sick, and I did. I got something called glandular fever. Anyone had that before? Yeah. Months and months of a sore throat, cough, snotty nose, everything, and it just wouldn't go away. So I started to educate myself. After going to the doctor um, and being handed some antibiotics and some steroids and being told I had IBS as well, and I went home and felt kind of a little bit cheated after that, after paying $75 and spending 10 minutes with this doctor. And I started to research uh, myself as to what was going on. And I I found that IBS was a blanket term for for something that was based on um, something that was going on in the gut. And for me, there was something called leaky gut syndrome, where because of the stress, because of the bad diet, um, because of all of those things that were going on in my lifestyle, I had developed tiny holes in my gut. And that meant that the food that I was putting in was gradually leaking into my bloodstream, causing things like chronic fatigue, uh, depression, all all kinds of things. Um, So at this point, I really started to educate myself as to why this was going on. And I was brought back to some ancient wisdom by a man named Hippocrates, Let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food. So when I moved back up to Auckland, I started a business with a few best mates of mine that I'd been been friends with since primary school. And we set out to make health and well-being cool. And at this point, nobody was making green smoothies. We were total strangers with this approach, and people would walk past our little stall at the Parnell French markets and be like, what's that grass that you've got in there? (laughs) Uh, We really had to coax people in to to try um, and give it a go. But really what we wanted to do, instead of being, instead of focusing on the smoothie that we were, our product that we were giving to people, we were really focusing on the interaction that we had with the people, kanohi ki te kanohi. And it was about the experience that they had with us instead of the product that we were giving them. And we also tapped into some indigenous Maori wisdom with with this approach, and we learned that nutrition is not the only thing for health and well-being. There's also uh, this very simple framework. Um, This is the Maori model of Te Whare Tapawha, which illustrates four different um, aspects of holistic well-being. One being physical, taha tinana, uh, one being mental and emotional, taha hiningaro, one being te wairua, the spiritual aspect, and one being the social, the whānau aspect. Um, and for us, we started to really 
embody this with our humble little stall at the Pineal French Markets. And we started to grow a community of people that would come and visit us every weekend for their medicine, for, for their tune-ups, for their body. And it wasn't long until we started learning about gut health and that New Zealand has one of the highest rates of bowel cancer in the world. And Hippocrates also said that all disease begins in the gut. And we're, putting, we're out there, we're putting a whole lot of stuff in there, but we really need to be conscious about what that is. And one of the things that we started putting in our smoothies was something called kombucha, which is a fermented tea. Uh, yeah, basically a tea that's fermented for about 10 days with a, this bacteria, it's called a SCOBY. Anyone seen a SCOBY before? Yeah, scary looking things. It looks like a mushroom. Uh, but, but that SCOBY, it, over time, it metabolizes the sugar and the tea into living enzymes and good bacteria, probiotics for our gut. And people saw, that pouring, people saw us pouring that into our, our smoothies, and they were just like, yo, why, like, what are you doing? I just want to buy a bottle of, of that. And so we, we pivoted with our business model and pu started putting these bottles on the table and started selling it for $20 a bottle. And we, there was a lot of education at that point, four years ago, no one knew what kombucha is. It seems everyone does now. Um, but we've really seen a massive growth in that, in that consciousness and in that market. And that, that enabled us to go from a smoothie store to on the shelves of stores all over the country. And then we started to, to take our operation into the community. We started to attend festivals. Um, this is us at Splore in 2015. Um, in the middle there, next to me, the, the tallest one there is the late Jason Corliss. And this guy was one of my greatest, greatest mates, and he passed away this year. It's all part of this, this journey. And that, it was a reminder that you never know when, when your time's going to come to make every second count and take every opportunity that you can. So as well as going to all of these events, we also started putting on our own events. And this is one, this was the, the fourth iteration. It was called the On Party 4.0. And this, this moment here was just after a, a mass meditation that we had at this party. And it's, it was alcohol free, zero waste, and we just got all of our mates involved. And all of our friends in the community that played an instrument, we put them on the stage. And we sourced our local community and created a festival, much like what EHF is doing here. And one of the things that we realized about Organic Mechanic is that it abbreviates down to OM, OM. And I don't know how you guys feel, but would you like to do an OM? So uh, if you just take one breath, we'll just take one clearing breath and then we'll gear up and we'll make some good vibrations up in here. So breathing in. Letting out. All right, now breathing in for this arm. So people talk about creating culture within their business, and this became part of our culture, was OMS. We'd OM it before we had meetings, bring it, because it brings us all together, that vibration. It's the same vibration. I've never been to space, but supposedly the sun creates that vibration. So at the same time as doing all of these events and things, we started to realize, oh, how much, what is, we're creating this waste. We're, even though they're glass bottles, we still have no idea where they're going to end up. People recycle them, but they also just end up any, everywhere else. So we started putting our kombucha into kegs, and we started putting refill stations all over the, the country. And we realized that that was, it wasn't, it was really the behavior that we needed to change. And so that's a lot of what we focus on now, is creating a transformation in that behavior. 
And we also realized that we have a deep connection to our landscape, to te whenua, to te ngahere, our forests. And the sign of a, a clean river is a sign of a healthy forest. And this is Te Waiho Walkway up in uh, Ham Hamilton. And it was recently slammed. A, a company came in, I think it's Pure Blue NZ, and was going to extract 7 million litres of water per day out of this spring. And the local iwi put forth that this would destroy the Modi, so take away from the mana of, of this place, and this was stopped. Um, so the, the, the idea of kaitiakitanga, of stewardship, of conservation of, of our environment is a, a huge thing for me. And it, as an artist, I, I use my skills to help to keep alive this knowledge, because when we are entrusted with knowledge, it is our responsibility to keep that safe. Cannabis. Who, who knew this plant could cause so much trouble around the world? <laughs> this, this little seedling here has put more people in jail, torn apart more families than anything else on this planet. And coincidentally, it's also a thing which spurred me on this whole journey. And as part of my a activism uh, ventures, I put together Hemp for Victory Aotearoa, which is a, a campaign to change the awareness of, of hemp and cannabis in New Zealand as a whole. And this year, last year, um, November 2017, a group of radicals and myself got together and we planted our own hemp farm, and that's industrial hemp. Um, and the idea with that is to, was to empower local and rural communities with a way that they could <laughs> monetize their latent land, um, and also to heal that land, because hemp can create phytoremediation in the soil and also can also sequester carbon from the atmosphere. So there's a lot that we can do with this plant. And there's a group there, and in the middle there is my partner, Savannah. Savannah, can you stand up? Do you want to say, kia ora, Savannah? When we plant our next hemp farm in the next couple of weeks, that'll be our one-year anniversary. Kill it, babe. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, hemp has many, many things that we can use it for. Food. It's a staple food source with more protein than steak, more fibre than oats, and more omega-3, 6, and 9 than tuna. It's an amazing food source. It's, we can make clothing from it. We can make buildings from it. We can do so many things with this plant. So together with Savannah and a, and a few other radicals, we created a company called Arohem Aotearoa. And we sponsored the New Zealand Hemp Summit a few months ago in Wellington. Um, and there I, I met Michael Mayo, and we shared uh, an idea that if every child in New Zealand had a two or three tablespoons of hemp seeds a day, we could dramatically increase the health of this whole country. So for Arohem Aotearoa, we have four E's of change, which are our guiding principles. Environment, we, we are doing, we're planting hemp to, to heal the soil. We are, kaitiakitanga is our main value. Education, we're mentoring farmers to grow. We're, trying to, we're creating the networks for people to figure out how to do this in, in their families if they have never done it before. Embodiment, we're embodying our values of kaitiakitanga. We're planting in tune with the moon, maramataka, um, keeping in tune with those lunar cycles, and enterprise, teaching people how to create business, people who have no idea, and pe bringing them into a place where they're creating a, a whole product in their, whole, in their backyard with their whanau. So if you'd like to talk to me about this, I'm hosting an open space later on today, talking about hemp and regenerative agriculture. This is how you can contact me. Thank you for listening. Kia ora.